You can let with some Christian. You go back to work and represent the Lord, and you'll be surprised. Folk may not like you, but they sure will respect you. I can't stand them. But I need a prayer. I'm going to look up. Look, I mean, we don't ever talk. You know, but I, we don't ever talk. But our doctor said, but I've got some issues, you know, and I. I mean, I, I can't tell nobody else here, you know, we ain't been close, but I just been looking for you when you go to church, you know what I'm saying? But you, when you kind of pray yourself, I just, you know, I, you'd be surprised how the heathens out there who act and talk crazy will come back to you when they need prayer. But you got to get to the place where you're not moved by your environment or the folk in your world. Get to a place where your trust and faith is in God to the point that nothing else moves you. You got to get your mind so set and stuck on the things of God that anything else sounds like you tell us last Sunday when people began to sing Jesus said, why did you doubt Peter? Why did you think there was any other option besides walking? You got to get your mind to the place that you think ain't no other option besides doing it God's way. I'm not going to go back to the devil way. I'm not going to do my flesh way. I'm not going to do the world way. There's no other option but doing it God's way. When you get your mind to the point, I'm going to do it God's way no matter what, the devil going to have to run. But you got to decide where you stay. You'll never be able to hear what you can't even see. I, I don't know what you did. Some of you have had losses recently. Some of you are going through some hurts and pain. Some of you got problems in your marriage and you got kids who have lost their natural mind doing stuff that would run you crazy. I, I understand there's insanity on every level. Ain't nobody free, baby. Y'all all look good like y'all been walking on water all week. I tell you, every one of y'all got some kind of issue. And you just better hide than other folk. But everybody got a problem. Yeah. Yeah. You got to decide right now where you're going to stay. Will you stand with the Lord? Tell somebody, I'm not going to quit. Tell I'm not going to quit. Tell them like you mean. I'm not gonna quit. I'm not gonna quit. Amen. Amen. We ain't gonna quit. And get involved and get on board. Because being mediocre is like quitting. Half-hearted is like quitting. And I don't know about you, but but most in the sisters, men are different than women. Most women up in here, let your car not start one time. That car, I can't trust that car. It broke down. I, no, I would not drive that car. Again, I had to call Triple A, and, and I, I, I will not drive a car I cannot trust. Let your refrigerator stop one day. It stopped working one day. I got rid of it. Yet you want to be half part of God. He can't depend on you for anything. And he's supposed to keep supporting and backing you when you act like he has no value in your life. Yeah, Let him bless you. You're here all this morning. God's been so good to you. It's been so good to you. If you're not a Christian, the hell is too long. For the Christian, being on this world is as close to hell as you ever get. To the non-Christian, being in this world is as close to heaven as you ever get. I would declare to you, if you're not a part of the family of God, I want to challenge you to come. It is so... It's so it's so easy to become a Christian. I couldn't imagine why you would pass that opportunity up. If you believe that Jesus is the Son of the living God, the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes from hearing the word of God. You don't acquire saving faith by hearing what Pastor said and your uncle will say and what your cousin and the folk on radio said. You hear, you find saving faith based on what you find inside the word of God. But once you find that faith inside this word, the Bible says, without faith it's impossible to please him. But he that comes to God must be that he is and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. Friend, right now you've got to have a desire to have a diligent search for the Lord and make you get out your seat and stand over this audience and declare your, we call it repentance. Your repentance is just a change of mind. Acts 17 verse 30 says one time God overlooked ignorance but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. Repentance is a change of mind. It's just a constant decision to say I'm going to stop doing things my way and start doing things God's way. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and have it all down. You're going to fight with doing that for the rest of your natural life. But it begins right now with a decision to decide to trust God more than I trust myself. With that decision, a change of mind we call repentance. The Bible declares you make that decision in your mind. It'll make you get out of your seat, your stand. 
both as artists and declare and recall your confession that I believe that Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Bible says, Matthew 10, 32, the Lord said, if you confess before men, I'll also confess you before my Father which is in heaven. The confession is a duality to it. On one side of it, it says, I want Jesus to become my Savior. The other side says, I want Jesus Christ to become my Lord. Which means I want him to tell me what to do and how to do it and to give me some strength and some power. You're here on this, on this morning, and, and, I, and I want you to make a decision right now to put your trust in the Lord. To make the conscious confession today to say, I trust Jesus and I want him to guide my life. And once you make that confession, you would actually need help to misread the last part of the text. Mm. Mark 16, 16 said, he that believed and is baptized shall be saved. Great. You have to have help. You couldn't read that and miss it. If you want to be saved, you must be baptized with an understanding that you're doing it for the forgiveness of your sins. And the Bible says God will add you to his family. And baptism, we take you to the back and put you under the water and we leave you there. Hey, don't talk to baby worry, y'all. Anybody have no kids in the house? <laughs> you find that, you find, you find, you find. I, I want you to realize, I want you to realize the importance, if you're not a Christian, of being added to the family of God. And if you're not a Christian, this is your opportunity to do some things differently. I, 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 I know God will give you all the time you need. Also, he will not give you all the time that you want. If you're not a Christian, I challenge you to come. But if you're part of the family of God, you're already in the church. You're already part of the family. And you haven't decided you're going to give it to something to God. Well, I just got to make another $1,000. I got to make a little more money, and I got to buy another car, and I got to get the kids through school, and I got to... The devil will put all that stuff in your place. And if you're not careful, you spend your whole life chasing and chasing and chasing. The answer he gives you is not always don't. Sometimes his best answer for you is wait. Don't do it now. You know, when you got to get the kids out of school. When they got to go to elementary school. When they got to get them in school. When they got to get them in high school. When they got to go to college. When they got to get married. When they got to get some kids. When they take the grandkids. Get them ready. If you're not careful, the devil and the world around you will have your whole life engrossed in everything but God. Friend, if you are a Christian and you have not surrendered your will to God and let him take you over and begin to use you, you need to come. And when you do that, God does something different. Where's the night Bible class? I want to commend uh, uh, Brother Middleton. Wednesday night he brought his brother to the Bible class for Wednesday night. And a lady he met, she saw his truck, fire truck, and said, you working on I got a son in Louisville. Or do you know him? He said, won't you come to class for Wednesday night? She came up. Do, do you not realize that God has given you the ability to do the most powerful work that can be done to reach somebody that's lost? And give them an answer for life. But if you don't value the answer God has given you. You'll never share that message with anybody. I want you to see that God has brought you here now. But any message he gives you. is not for you to hold within yourself. It's for you to take it. And then give it back out to someone else. What you learned this morning. You're supposed to take that and tell somebody. Let me give you what I got. The, the message takes on power when it comes back out of you. That's why it's called a living word. It's living because it doesn't sit still. It comes inside like breathing, and it breathes back out on top of people's lives. And everybody in here ought to be able to say, I, I, I talk to five people every week. I'm talking to people about coming to meet the Lord. If he ain't worth meeting, that tells something about you and your faith. If he's worth meeting, then everybody that you meet and talk to, you ought to be saying, you got to come meet my friend. Who blessed and changed my life. Yes. Friend, if, you, if you're not in the family of God, I challenge you to come. If you are a Christian, I invite you to come. But you can come right now. I'm making a renewed commitment to the Lord. Let him bless you. Let him give you some power, some strength, and some might. And all you got to do is step forward and say, Father God, bless me. Won't you come? I want you to come right now as you stand and sing. I invite you to come. <laughs> I in love with
Has not your burden been hard enough as it is? Aren't you ready to surrender? And let go of some of the troubles you've been carrying? He knows what he's doing. He'll take off all your trouble and give you what you really need. Will you trust him? Jesus is the best thing I have. looking at you, looking for a chance to catch you off guard, looking for a chance to take your life out, to get some, you are always in danger, and the, the trouble is that most of the time you ain't got no awareness of it. But a lot of times God has actually protected you. He's kept you from danger. It, it, just one more moment standing in that parking lot would have gotten you some serious trouble. Just one more moment about uh, that car coming by and flashing that light, stop your house and be broken into you have no idea how often God just this week alone has looked out for you. But he's brought you here for a reason. He's blessed you and given you a chance today to make some changes inside your world. You're here, and if you're not a Christian, again, don't make me beg you to do what you know you need to do. Let God bless you, give you some power and some strength and some might. If right now you know that you need prayer, come request in prayer. The Bible says the fervent and effectual prayers of righteous can accomplish much. We're going to pray for you, and God does answer prayer. But you've got to realize that the answer is not in your own strength and power. And sometimes in life, we're going to say a general prayer, but sometimes in life, you don't need a general prayer. Sometimes you need to pray for me. I, I need prayer. If that's your reality, bless you, baby. Bless you, bless you, sweetheart. Bless you. If that's your reality, and know that right now with all that you're fighting and all that you're going to, and you know there's a need that you have, if you raise your hand, I'll walk with you. Someone next to you can walk with you. But this is your chance to make a change, and God can bless you. This is the first day, God bless you, brother. This is the first day for the rest of your life. If you trust God right now, he will give you power and authority. He can take over and fix every battle that you've had to face. Uh, again, I challenge you and I invite you. Let God bless you, give you some strength. We'll conclude this song. And as we do, once again, I invite you to come. Won't you come again as we sing? I invite you to come. Tempted and tried, I will be to wander. Why it should be just all the day long While there are other just living about The time is still right. The Lord is always there. Cheer up my brother. 